God is good. Hallelujah. And he is, and it is he who has called us and he has made us to be his own. Hallelujah. So let's, uh, let's take the word as we pray that God speak his word. Hallelujah. That we are his people who wish, who shall hear his voice. Because we are, we are the people who are called to hear his voice. My sheep will hear my voice, the word of God says. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. We are his sheep. Amen. We are the sheep of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are the sheep of the Lord and he is our good shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to take today the scripture verse from Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven and he eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here the word of God says our citizenship is in heaven. Hallelujah. Where is our citizenship? In heaven. We are people of heaven. Hallelujah. We are the children of the most high living God and our citizenship is in heaven. And we are here about, we are not the citizens of this world. We are strangers here on the earth. The book, the epistle of, uh, the epistle of Peter says, as strangers here on the earth. We are strangers, we are not, uh, we are sojourners. We are not people who are here forever, but we are sojourners. We are called to be here for a moment. We are only for a time. Our, our journey here on this earth is only for a moment, but we are on, on a way. We are on a way to where? We are on a way to? Hallelujah. We are on a way to heaven. We belong to God and we belong to heaven and our identity is in heaven. Hallelujah. So the very, the very, the very verse, he says, uh, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we what? We eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly body so that they will be like his glorious body. We will be like him. Hallelujah. We will be like him having a glorious body. Hallelujah. But till that time when he is going to come, we, as we eagerly await for his coming, our eyes are fixed on, on in heaven. We, our eyes are fixed where? To the heaven where God, Jesus is going to come to take us, uh, to take us with him forever, to be with him forever. For till that time, we need to keep our identity. We need to understand that we need to have this identity fixed in our hearts. We need to have this identity that we are citizens of heaven. We are not the citizens of this world. We are not entangled with the things of this world. We are not entangled with the, with the world and the things around us. Hallelujah. But for we are, we are, we have fixed our eyes there. Hallelujah. From where we belong to, to where we belong to. Hallelujah. And as I speak these words that as we belong to heaven, as we belong to heaven, there is a place that we are right now seated with. There is a place that God has made us to sit with. Now we are the children of God. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Where is Jesus seated now? He's at the right hand of the father. He is seated in the, at the right hand of the Father. In all glory, he is seated there. Hallelujah. In all glory, the word of God says uh, in Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, he says, uh, in, uh, sorry, in Ephesians chapter 1, that Jesus is now seated with God above all powers and above all principalities, above everything God has made him to sit with him. Hallelujah. So where is Christ seated? He's seated with God at the right hand of the Father, far above all powers, principalities, rulers, and authorities. And he has given him the name that is above all names. That unto that name, every knee bows in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Hallelujah. Everything is subject unto the name of Jesus. Everything is subject unto him. So he is at the right hand of the Father. He is in power. He's an authority. He's in glory. He's in majesty with the Father in heaven. Hallelujah. He is seated there. Hallelujah. When he is seated there, now what did God do? What did God do? And if you read in, in the same book, Ephesians chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 4 onwards, he says, But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, he has made us alive with Christ. He has made us what? He, we were once in sin, we were dead, right? 
Because of sin we were dead. We were, uh, we were absent from God. We were separated from God. We were not one with God. We were not reconciled with God. We, we had no relationship with God. We were orphans. We were not his. We are not his people. We were not his people. We were not. We were separated from God because of sin. But in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. I want you all to read if you have the Bible right in front of you. But because of his great love for us. Whose love for us? God's great love for us. God who is rich in mercy because of his mercy he has made us alive with whom with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions it is by grace you have been saved now that you are saved and God raised us up God what did God do he has raised us up with whom with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus hallelujah you see the place you see the place and the position that God has made us to sit right now hallelujah it is in it, it is in the spirit it is in the spirit that we are now we have become one with God and we have become one with Christ and now we are seated with him in the heavenly places and where is God and where is Christ now he is at the right hand of the father and in what, in what power, in, in all power, in all authority, in all majesty, in all, in all grace, hallelujah. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And God has given him the power and authority and above, for, above all powers, above all rulers, principalities, above every dominions. Above Satan and all his kingdom and all his fallen angels. All the fallen, uh, the, the principalities, the rulers of the air, which are in the atmosphere. There is, a, there is an atmosphere where the, where the demons are, are having power and they're ruling from that place. You know, there are three heavens that the Bible speaks about. There are three heavens. The first heaven is the sky that we see above. And then there is a second heaven where these forces of darkness, these dominions, these principalities, the rulers of the air, which are there. But there is a third heaven where, where, where God and his, uh, and, 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 the, and, the, and angels uh, and where Jesus is uh, far above everything. Hallelujah. There is a place above everything. Hallelujah. He is seated above there. He is seated there. Hallelujah. And now God has made him to sit above there. Hallelujah. And so what is under him? What is under him? The forces of darkness. The rulers of the air. The principalities. The dominions. Which are now under, now they are under his feet. Now they are where? Under him. Hallelujah. They are not above. They are under him. Jesus now is seated at the right hand of the father. Who is now? Jesus is now representing us. When he is seated there, we are seated with him. Where is he? He is in you. He is in you and he is there. Hallelujah. He is in you. He is dwelling in you in the spirit. He's dwelling in you in the spirit and he's also present there in, in the heavenly places. Now, the word of God says, those who are joined to the Lord in the spirit have become one with him in the spirit. Those who are joined to the Lord in the spirit have become one with him. And if you have become one with him, so in the spirit, you are also one become, you have become one with, him, with the Lord who is seated at the right hand of the Father. So if he is seated above every power, every principality, rulers and authorities, above Satan and all his fallen angels and the dominions and the principalities, so we are seated with Christ, so we are seated above all his powers, above all the principalities, above all the dominions that are there in the air. Hallelujah. He has now given us the place above everything. Hallelujah. Now Satan has no power over you. Because in Christ Jesus, you are more than a conqueror. In Christ Jesus, you are victorious. In Christ Jesus, you are blessed. In Christ Jesus, you have the victory. Hallelujah. He has given you the power over the enemy. He has given you the power over the enemy in his name. Hallelujah. In his name, you have the power. And they are all, the, the, Satan and all the forces of darkness are subject to us. Because they are subject to him. Because they are subject to the Lord, the Lord, the Lord of our lives, the shepherd of our souls, the king of our lives. 
the great I am who is with us. He is above everything and when he is above everything, we are above everything. Hallelujah. We are not subject to the forces of darkness today. Hallelujah. That's why we are citizens of heaven. We are seated with God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why he has said you are heirs to the throne of God and joint heirs with Christ. Heirs to what? Heirs to that authority and the power and the dominion over every forces of darkness. Hallelujah. You have the force, you have the power to declare and decree. Hallelujah. When you declare and decree, hallelujah, God, God will do what you have called you to call. You call yourself to hallelujah. You, you speak hallelujah. When you speak, when you speak, there is authority release. There's a power released. That's why you have to understand who you are. That's why you have to understand your identity. You are seated with Christ. You are not here. You, though you are in the world, you are not of the world. You are belonging to God. The glory of the Lord is in you. The glory that is in the heaven, the same glory is in you today. That means you have become, you, you are now, you have that inheritance which is of God. You have the inheritance which is of heaven. The blessing of God Almighty is upon you, is in you. You're not, you're not, you're not uh, 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 like what you, you know, the, the people in the world talk. They look at the situation and they look at their problems and they speak that language. We talk the language of the flesh. We are controlled by the flesh, the carnal minded people. But we are not carnally minded. But we are spiritually minded. We are of the spirit and the spirit of God is in us. We are spiritual people. Having the spirit, having the mind of the spirit, the mind of Christ in us. When Christ was here on the earth, he did not live from the earth. He lived from heaven. He lived from heaven. He said, I am the father of one. And anything that he needed on the earth, he looked to the father. And the father supplied everything that he needed. When he multiplied the five loaves and the two fishes, where did the multiplication come from? It came from the father. The glory was, the glory was from heaven. The glory was of heaven. Because heaven was in him. He says, he says, though, uh, uh, he said to Pontius Pilate, he says, it is I who give you give myself to you. You do not uh, you do not take me. You cannot have me. You cannot touch me. But this is the appointed time. That's why I am giving you giving myself to you. No one could touch him. No one could do any harm to him. No one could come near him because he he lived from being conscious of. Of heaven in him here on the earth he was living from that consciousness of having heaven in his heart heaven in his life heaven is with him the, he says if I if I if I just say a word the, the legion of angels will come down and fight for me he did not want men to fight for him he said I, I can command the angels and they will come down that's where he belonged to he was connected to heaven. Angels were coming down from heaven. They were ascending and they were descending from heaven. Hallelujah. He was connected to heaven. Today, you are not connected to the world. You are connected to heaven. Hallelujah. He said, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. St. Paul says, my God will supply. No, he did not look for men for supplying his need. He knew that his God, that his, his eyes were fixed on heaven. Hallelujah. He was looking to heaven for everything. That's the freedom. Hallelujah. That to understand that you're connected to, to, the, to the superior, to the, to the supernatural. You're connected to, 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 the, to the realm that is above. You are not connected to the realm which is below. You are connected to the realm which is from above. 
That's why you will not creep and cry for anything. You know God is with you. You know God knows your need. You know that he will supply your need. You know that he is more than enough for you. Hallelujah. You know that, that he is all able to do far exceedingly. Abundantly above all that you can ever think and ask. He's about to do. He's, he's all able to do. According to the power that is at work in me. Galatians in Ephesians 3.20 says. He says my God is able to do far exceedingly abundantly. Above all that I can ever think and ask. About, about ever, what I ever think and ask. My God is able to do. According to what? His power which is at work in me. What is the power? It is the presence of God. It is the presence of heaven in me. It is the presence of the Father in me. It is the presence of God Almighty in me. The glory of God in me. That power is in me. When I understand that who I am and whose I am and who is in me, who dwells in me, I am in him and he is in me, we have become one. Just as the Father and I are one, he says, Jesus said, so you and I have become one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. It's so important to have the understanding of your citizenship, of your, of your, of your identity. Your identity is in heaven. That you are seated, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. You have become one with him. That's why St. Paul says, have the mind of Christ. For you have the mind of Christ. Why? What is the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is not poor. It's not weak. It's not poverty stricken. It's not weak, weak mindedness. It's not impoverished. That for anything and everything, we, that we may lose our heart for anything and everything. More. I cannot be weak for anything because my citizenship is in heaven and my father is my is the father my father in heaven is the king is the lord he's the king jesus who is at the right hand of the father who is interceding for me who is interceding for me who knows what i need before he could even ask oh, thank you jesus before he could even before he, i could even ask he knows what i need thank you jesus Oh, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Master. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read uh, the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 20. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 2, verse 20. Hallelujah. Colossians, chapter 2, verse 20. Since you died with Christ, what it says? Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world. Why? As though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Ah, very powerful word. Since you died with Christ to what? To the elemental spiritual forces of the world. You have died to what? To these forces. To the spiritual forces because there are there is a force here which is which is playing with people there are people who have become victims to the forces of the enemy they can easily beat people they can easily make people cry people can easily lose their heart easily lose their mind easily lose their peace why because we have become we are more we are because we are victims we have not understood the spiritual, uh, the spiritual consciousness, uh, the spiritual awareness, uh, the understanding that who I am, whose I am, where I am seated, hallelujah, that God, uh, that the Lord God Almighty dwells in me. When I humble myself and I understand and I take hold of this understanding that I, I, am, I am of God, I'm a child of God, that my identity is, uh, is God's identity. If I'm a child of God, then I will represent that identity that I'm a child of God. I will not represent two different identities at the same time. 
I will say that I am a child of God, but I will be, I will act in somewhere something else when when I have when when I see problems around me, when I see troubles around me, when I go into this world, do I act and do I speak like the people in the world? Do I talk like the people of the world? This is there is a difference. That's what Saint Paul says. Since you died, putting to death is very important. When I understand my my identity, uh, be of my identity in Christ, that I am seated with Him, that He has made me to sit with Him, that I am a heir through the throne of God and a joint heir with Christ, and every blessing of God Almighty is mine. That's why Ephesians chapter one verse three says, "Blessed be the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed me with ev- who has who has blessed me." In, with every spiritual blessings in Christ, it's not that He is going to bless you; He's already blessed you. He has blessed me with every spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. So I am already blessed in Christ. So mine is uh, the inheritance. Mine is the blessings. So I receive it by faith. I know these blessings are mine, and I take hold of it. And I say thank you, Lord, for the spiritual blessings. I thank you, Lord, for every blessing in my family, blessing in my life, blessing in my every walk of my life, O Lord. That I am walking with you, O God. That every blessing is coming in search of me, O Lord. Hallelujah! Every blessing is falling in place for me, O God. I will never lack for anything because you have blessed me, Lord. I will never lack for anything, O God, because you are my blesser, O Lord. Hallelujah! And I have been blessed in Christ with every blessing, O Lord. Hallelujah! So I lack for nothing. I will never lack for anything because you have already blessed me. See the understanding. When I take hold of this understanding that I am already blessed, the blessing has already been released for me in Christ. So all that I need to do is to take hold of it. See, when you have one lakh in your account, will you go around beating around the bush, please, asking for money? No, because you know you have money in your account. You only have to simply go into the bank, go and get your money and get it in cash. As simple as it is. There's nothing to work and break your head for that. God has already already blessed you with every blessings. All that I need to do is to thank Him for the blessing that He has released. All that I need to do is to thank Him and praise Him for the blessing that He has already given to me. In Christ, I do not have to ask for it. He says it will come in search of me. It will come looking for me. It will come at. It will connect to me because I am connected to the vine. So, which, because I am connected to the vine, every blessings will come connecting for me. Hallelujah! Come searching for me. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He says, since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, why, as though you still belonged to the world, do you submit to its rules? The world has its rules. The world will tell you. The world will make you dance to its tunes. World says, say, "Arey, hey, there is no job in the market. There is no job in the market." So. I don't think so. You will get a job. The world will say there is no business in the market. So I don't think so. You will have business. The world will say the world is in a crisis. So you are in trouble. The world will say the company will say look, company is in trouble. So jobs are going to go. So so what happens when I hear this message? When I hear this, what the world is speaking at me? I receive it. I'm a victim at the hands of the enemy. I'm a victim to the rules of this world, to the problems of this world, to the situation that is in the world outside. Isaac was in a famine. Isaac was in a famine in Gerar, and there was a great famine. And everyone left the place. Everyone left that place because there was no water. There was no food. Nothing was there. There was a great famine, and Isaac was also deciding to go. God came and spoke to him. You stay there, and I'm going to bless you. You stay there, and I'm going to bless you. Says the Lord, Hallelujah. 
You don't have to, to, to behave the way the world is behaving. The people around you are behaving because they're, because they're looking at the situation and they're going. But I have called you and I have chosen you and I'm going to bless you. What did God do? He did not send the rain, but he made the, the ground, the very ground that he was, he made the ground under him, the very ground that he was, uh, he was cultivating, the very ground was, was made watered. It was watered under the, hallelujah. And there was a great harvest for, for Isaac. And all the people around him were looking at his uh, field. They were green, but all everywhere there was a famine. Hallelujah. Everywhere around him, there was a great famine. But in the very place where Isaac was based, that place was cultivated and there was a great harvest. Who did it? God did it. Hallelujah. Why? God made him to renew his mind and, tell, and, and spoke to him, Look, as I blessed Abraham, I'm going to bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. As I bless Abraham, I'm blessing you. Hallelujah. So God is the same God today. Hallelujah. Speaking to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. He says in John 16, 33. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I have overcome this world. This world has already been overcome. You are not in a place where you are in a trouble and there is no help for you. I am your ever present help. I am always there for you. I am always there to pick you up. I am always there to supply your need. I am always there to deliver you. I am always there to, to see you blessed in every situation. Hallelujah. Because you belong to me. It is I who have chosen you. You do not choose me. I chose you. And if I have chosen you, I have the power to bless you. I have the power to, to enable you to see the blessings. Hallelujah. The grace of God, the love of God has come down from heaven for you, my brothers and sisters. For you, my sister. Hallelujah. You are not alone. You are not poor. You are not weak. You are not. Hallelujah. You are blessed. You are blessed because you belong to the Lord. You can never be lacking for anything. Refuse to believe in a lie. Refuse to accept that is not of the kingdom of God. Accept only that is of God. Receive only that is of God. Hallelujah. And walk from the truth. Your family is blessed. Your husband is blessed. Your children are blessed. You are blessed my brothers and sisters. You can never be cursed because all the curse has been taken on the cross at Calvary. Jesus died for you. He shed his blood for you. His blood is speaking a better word for you, my man sisters. He is at the right hand of the Father, speaking a better word for you, my man sisters. No matter where you are, in what situation you are, the one who is in you is greater. The one who has called you is faithful. And he will never fail you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. He is all able to do far exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever think and ask according to the power which is at work in you. You need to look at the power which is God, which God Almighty has released inside of you. Hallelujah. That's why it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who empowers me, who emboldens me and he gives me the mind of a victor, not of a victim. I'm not going to give in, but I'm going to overcome by the power which is at work in me. Hallelujah. I will never be overwhelmed with the problems that are around me, but I will overcome by the power which is at work in me. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is my rock and he is my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So beautifully, the St. Paul says, since you have died, died to what? To your flesh. Died to what? To your negative emotions. You have died to your feelings, which are unclean, which is unholy. Do not let those unclean emotions and, and your feelings take control of your mind and your heart. Do not give in to your negative emotions, but have them under control by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the word that is in you, hallelujah, because the thoughts will come in your mind, says uh, you are a loser, you are defeated, you are, you are, you are poverty stricken, you don't have anything, you will, you will be on the road 
Your children will be on the road. There is no future for your children. There is no future for your family. There is no future for you. The enemy will speak to you. Hallelujah. But you and I are called to pull down the strongholds of the enemy. By the power and the authority of his word. To declare that I am blessed. That I belong to God. I belong to Christ. And he has planned for me. Plans to prosper me. And for my great future. Hallelujah. Refuse, reject anything and everything that comes in your way, that stops you, that hinders you from being what God has called you to be. You are not of this world. You are a child of God. You are a citizen of heaven. And all blessings are yours. All the blessings of God Almighty are yours. Because God has ordained it for you, for you and for me to receive it. And we shall walk in that blessing, sir. We will live in that blessing, sir. And we shall move in that blessing, sir. And we will be prosperous, sir. In every way. In our families, in our children. Our children will be prosperous, sir. Our families will be prosperous, sir. Because he has made us prosperous. He has made us blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Galatians 5.25. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. Read. Hallelujah. I want you all to read this. Something very powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. Hallelujah. Since we live. Since we live by the spirit. Since we live by the spirit. What? We live by what? We, since we live by the spirit. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, we need to keep what? We need to keep, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us keep ourselves in line with the Spirit. What the Spirit says to His church, what the Spirit is speaking to His, to his uh, bride, we are the bride of Christ. We are the, 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 the beloved of Christ. We are the loved of the Father. The Father has loved us. And it is in the Spirit that we are born again. We are born of the Spirit and we have the mind of the Spirit. So we are become one with the Spirit. And what the Spirit is speaking to us, we are keeping in step with the Spirit. And what the Spirit says, who we are, we are. Hallelujah. There is no two way around. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let's, let us hear what the Spirit is speaking to us. And let us keep in step with that. So we guard our hearts and our minds. And we do not wander around. We do not wander with our thoughts, uh, our speaking. We do not keep our, we do not, you know, we do not speak a different language. But we keep in line, we keep ourselves in step with the Spirit. Let the Spirit have an upper hand over our lives. Because we are not of the world. We are of God. We are born of God. We are born of the Spirit. Everything Jesus said, those who are born of the Spirit shall enter and shall have and shall inherit which is of God. We cannot inherit the blessings of God in the flesh. We cannot speak the language of the flesh and expect God to bless us. No. Period. No. There is no. There is absolute no to it. You cannot look to God and speak the language of the flesh and look for God for blessings. No. God will not and he will never. He can never and he will never. Because he does not have anything to do with the flesh. Because God is spirit. God is spirit and he, and he wants his children to be in the spirit. And to walk in the spirit. And to dwell in the spirit. Hallelujah. So understanding what the spirit is speaking to us through his word. Because God's word is spirit. God's word is spirit. And God's word is life. And we understand what the spirit is speaking to us. We need to speak the word hallelujah. We need to understand what the word is saying. Of who we are in Christ. As I, speak, as I spoke to you in, in Ephesians chapter 2. Where we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. We are, we are far above rules, above all powers, principalities, rulers and principalities of the air. The dominions of the air. They are subject to us, not we are subject to them. Hallelujah. We are not controlled by them, but we are controlling the, we are controlling the forces of darkness. We, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, the word of God says. Whatever we lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
So we have the power to bind and to bind what the forces of darkness. We have the power to loose the loose the blessings of God, and it gets loose here on the earth as it is loosed in heaven. We loose and we bind, and that's the power and authority that God has given us, and we receive and we and we inherit the kingdom which is of God in our lives. Hallelujah! We live from the truth. We live from the truth that we are of God. Hallelujah. We live to, we live to glorify God in our lives. Hallelujah. Ephesians, Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. That's as it said. Since we live by the spirit. Let us keep in step with the spirit. And in, in verse 24 says. Those who belong to Christ Jesus. Have crucified the flesh. And its passions and desires. The flesh will... The flesh will desire for all these things. The flesh will desire that you you behave and act and and live like the world and act like the world and talk like the world. Those who are those who are uh, verse twenty four five twenty four. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit. We let us keep in step with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Let us read that verse as I close on. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Since then, since then you have been raised with Christ. You are what? We have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Why? Because now we are raised with Christ, we are seated with Him. So our hearts are set, our hearts are set on things above. We are looking to we are looking to God. David said in his Psalms, Psalms, he says, Where does my help come from? From my uncle and aunties? Or for my grandfather, or for my father, or for, for my wives and my children. He was very clear in saying, My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Simple. Period. Here is St. Paul is saying, Let your heart be set on things above. Where? Where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. For you. In verse 3 says, for you died and you are, for you died, read this verse, Colossians chapter 3 verse 3, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. Your life is hidden in Christ, in God. Means your, 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 your identity which is of the flesh is no more there. Your identity is of Christ now. You have the identity which is of God. God has given you a new identity. <laughs> which is in Christ which is Christ just as he is you are so as Christ was walking in the fullness of God in him now the same the same fullness of God now dwells in you Christ is in you he is Emmanuel God living in you dwelling in you hallelujah now with that truth in us we have we have the glory of God manifesting everywhere, wherever we go. Even when I think, I see things happening. When I think, the moment I think something, the next thing that I see, that very thing which I'm thinking will be right, right in front of me. I don't have to even ask. I even, even, when I even think of certain people or certain things, I see them coming before me. I see them calling me. Or I, I see I do see those things coming knocking at my door. I don't even have to ask. I don't even pray for things. I don't pray for things, my brothers and sisters. I don't ask God for any things. I only ask for Him in my life. I want Him, His presence, His grace to be in my life. His love, His love to be so strong in me that I shall never be separated. That I shall never be poor and weak in my in loving him and loving his people whom he has given in my heart. Hallelujah. That it should be full of God, full of his presence, full of his grace, full of his, full of all of him in me. 
that I may bear witness to the truth that he is he is the living God dwelling in me and people will see him in me hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord we worship you Lord let's give ourselves fully to the Lord let us surrender and tell him Lord we are yours Lord we belong to you we are the citizens of your kingdom Lord Lord make us more and more conscious of you in us Lord make us more and more conscious of you in us living in us that we be conscious of you O oh God that we may never be separated O oh Lord yes Lord we want to love you about everything and we want to seek you with all our hearts Lord and love you with all our hearts grant us the grace this day O oh Lord that we may love you with all our hearts and seek you with all our hearts because you are our everything hallelujah let God take over your hearts and your minds that he may take over your hearts your thinking your speaking your your understanding will be in God will be in his presence that you will never be separated from him that you'll never be separated from his uh, from from your from your in, in, in your speaking in your thinking that your thoughts will be holy your speaking will be holy your you whatever you do will be holy hallelujah because the one who's in you is holy that you'll be so one with him that everything that you do everything that you say will glorify God in your life thank you Jesus Let's give ourselves to the Lord as I surrender, as I close, sir. Lord, I thank you for speaking your word, O oh God. I thank you for revealing yourself to us. Let your glory.